Idle Transfiguration is one of the most broken curse techniques in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. The ability to manipulate the soul and therefore the body with a simple touch is an ability that most sorcerers and curse spirits alike would be susceptible to. If one does not have a soul powerful enough to resist Maito's technique, then even one touch can prove to be fatal. However, on a reread of Jujutsu Kaisen, I came across Toji's revival in Shibuya and how his body interacted with the soul, which made me ask the question, would Idle Transfiguration work on Toji. In order to answer a question such as this, we need to first briefly establish what the limitations of Idle Transfiguration are, and how exactly Toji's Heavenly Restriction body interacts with the concept of the soul within the series. Idle Transfiguration is, in a nutshell, soul manipulation. By placing his palms on his opponent, Mahito is able to distort and warp the shape of the soul to fit his desires. Even in the early stages of growth, he was able to distort the shape of a human so much so that he could shrink a human body down to the size of a mere finger. When used on normal human beings, Mahito can take you out with his technique by violently changing your soul and body with a single touch. With a sorcerer, this number seemingly can vary. As shown in chapter 23, if Mahito uses idle transfiguration on an opponent that can protect their soul subconsciously with cursed energy, it would take more than one attack to finish the job. The technique still works, but the efficacy is greatly reduced. This fact is reinforced in chapter 128, where Mahito asks himself whether or not he can kill Toto in one shot with idle transfiguration. Granted, Toto is fresh in this battle, whereas Mahito is weakened from multiple attacks on his soul, but the fact remains that depending on the soul gap, Mahito's technique loses its potency. In both of these examples, Mahito can still bypass their conventional durability and go straight for the soul, demonstrating that his technique even works on those with minor resistances. If these two were the only showings of Mahito's technique being resisted, then I would confidently conclude that it is simply impossible to get around the effects of Idle Transfiguration. However, we have one more example, an example of a character who not only staved off the negative effects of soul manipulation, but someone who is completely immune to it, brushing Mahito off as if he were a mere speck. This character is none other than the King of Curses himself, Ryomen Sukuna. Chapters 28, 30, 31, and 129 all show one core thing that is integral to the conclusion of this video. In all of these chapters, one commonality remains. It is established or reinforced that Mahito cannot touch Sukuna's soul without dire consequences. Mahito, the curse spirit with a soul manipulation curse technique, does not have the ability to warp, distort, or even come into contact with Tsukuna's soul lest he get cut down the instant he does. These key moments clue us into the fact that there exist outliers with powerful enough souls to become completely immune to the likes of idle transfiguration. We can also determine that cursed energy levels and soul power don't correlate because Mahito in chapter 31 states that while Jogo has more cursed energy than the Tsukuna he encountered, Tsukuna's soul is on a completely different level than both his and Jogo's. In relation to Toji, this is huge. You see, in chapter 98, Toji reveals that because of his heavenly restriction, his body is so freakishly powerful that it leaves the realm of purely physical dominance and allows him to take over the soul of Seance Granny's grandson. This shows that he's able to resist a level of soul manipulation already just because of his body's ludicrous amounts of power. This overwhelming of the soul is further corroborated in chapter 110 and 113. Toji shows the ability to break completely free of Seance Granny's technique, and the narrator establishes that Toji was able to to overwrite the soul of her grandchild with the physical superiority of his body. On top of this already impressive feat, we learned in an interview with Gege that Kenjaku refrained from attempting to take over Toji's body because of how Heavenly Restriction may interact with this technique. In the words of Gege, quote, there's a possibility a bug may occur. This bug phrasing that he used in this answer is the same that he uses in the interview when referring to what his interaction with Seon's Granny technique was, saying, quote, it was like a bug, in reference to him breaking away from her technique. This similarity is relevant because of what Kenjaku says to Mahito in chapter 91. You theorize that the soul came before the body, but the body is the soul, and the soul is the body. This single line really starts to tie everything that we've seen of Toji in relation to souls and Mahito's technique together. If Kenjaku is right, and he is correct in saying that the soul and the body are one and the same, Toji's cursed energyless body being able to resist soul manipulation makes a lot of sense. His 
superhuman capabilities makes his soul superhumanly powerful as well, which allows him to skirt around much of the danger that techniques like Idol Transfiguration present. It's a bit of a leap to say that he would completely be immune to Mahito's techniques in the same way that Tsukuna is, but everything in the story surrounding the body, the soul, and Toji's interaction with these things lends to the idea that Mahito would have just as much trouble damaging Toji's soul as he would his body, which effectively declaws the curse technique and leaves him in a much more vulnerable position than he would normally be. So to answer the question posed at the beginning of the video, yes and no. We don't have enough evidence yet to determine that Toji would be completely immune to idol transfiguration in the same way that Tsukuna is, but at the same time, there is an abundance of information that lends to the idea that Toji would be able to resist it to a very high degree. This is definitely a very speculative video on my end and is subject to change as more information of Toji and Maki's Heavenly Restriction comes out as well as Mahito's idol transfiguration and how it relates to other characters. But if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you are notified when I upload. And if you want to see a video where I talk about my thoughts on Maki not only versus Mahito but the entire Disaster Curse family, click right here.